vapor power cycles or steam power cycle. Steam power cycles consist of 1. Carnot, 2. Rankine, 3. Superheat Rankine, then you have reheat, regenerative, and regenerative. So this cycle here, the Carnot cycle, is the ideal ones. Okay, and due to the impracticalities of Carnot cycle later on, you will have the modification of Carnot cycle to become Rankine, superheat Rankine, that is to have a higher thermal efficiency, then to reheat Rankine, then regenerative and the combined heat and power. That is to improve the efficiency of the cycle. So this is a TS diagram. From the TS diagram, you can see this is the saturation dome. So you have two temperature line, two isothermal line, and two isentropic or adiabatic line here. This refers to the two isentropic process, and this refers to the two isothermal process. Okay. So and then also you have two pressure line. One is the boiler pressure. And then later on, you have another pressure line here, which we call the constant condenser pressure line. So and then you have the high temperature and the low temperature. So you have the point one, two, three, and four, and it goes in clockwise direction. So state point one to two actually refers to the isothermal heat addition by the boiler. So the device to take up this job here is the boiler. Okay. And then from two to three, the task is done by the turbine where it undergoes isentropic expansion. Then the next one is the isothermal uh, cooling or heat rejection. So this is done by the condenser. So it's isothermal heat rejection. And then four to one, this is isentropic compression. And the task is done by the pump. Okay. Or liquid. We call it as liquid pump. So another TS diagram here that is to show you okay how to determine the area under the process path under the TH in order to find out your heat supply. So your heat supply should be equivalent to from state point 1 to 2, this area here. So this area, TH, that is the height, multiplied by the base of S2 minus S1 or S3 minus S4. So that is what you have for heat supply. So and then the next TS diagram here, again the saturation dome. And remember saturation dome here is steam, here is wet vapor, and here is the compressed liquid. On this line here is the dry saturated vapor line. And this is the saturated liquid line. Here x is equal to 1, here x is equal to 0. In between this area here, x is in between 1 and 0. Remember that. Okay, now take based on TL area under the process path of the TL line that is supposed to be 0.3 to 4. So you have 0.3 and 0.4. So the area here, okay, is your heat rejector. So, can find out the heat rejected by taking the height times the base. Now, based on this, you have source okay, to the heat engine. From the source, source you have quite a variety. So, you have solar energy, furnace, geothermal, or etc. etc. So, that form as the heat supply. So, it goes into the heat engine where it converts a certain amount of heat energy to work output. So if you take the work output minus the work input, you get network output. Okay. So and this is your heat rejected to the sink. Because according to um, the thermodynamic second law, not all energy can be converted to useful work. Not all the energy that is supplied to the heat engine or to any system, okay, to any engine can be converted to useful work. So there will be a high amount of energy that will be rejected to the cool uh, lower temperature region that means the sink okay so usually the sink that means the heat rejected usually most of the time is higher than the network output 
Okay, so the thermal efficiency is always that is why below 50%. So here is your heat supply and this is your heat rejected. So this is the source. This is your heat supply to the heat engine. It operates in clockwise direction. Then it produces network out and then heat rejected. Okay. So remember this equation based on energy balance. It is based on energy balance. So remember thermal efficiency is defined as design output over required input. And the design output of the heat engine is the network out. And then the required input is the heat supply here. Okay. So we have got to know that from here that network out is equal to heat supply minus heat rejected or sometimes you can say it is work out minus work in okay so that is your thermal efficiency put in all the kernel efficiency substitute all the heat supply and heat rejected okay so you will come to this equation here now this equation can further be simplified as 1 minus tl over th now the, impractical, uh, the impracticalities of Carnot cycle. So first one is point two to three here. From state point two to three here, state point two to three. Now the turbine cannot, uh, sorry, the turbine cannot handle steam with a high moisture contact. So why we say high moisture contact? As you can see, point three here, it is almost sitting in the middle of the dome. So we know that at this at this corner, x is equal to one. That means 100% dry steam. So at this point here, where you have no dry steam at all, all 100% liquid. So that means in between here, you will have x equals to 0 and x equals to 1, where x is the dryness fraction. That it depends on the mixture of the dry steam and the liquid. So dryness fraction is actually defined as the uh, amount of dry steam formed per kg of mixture. Okay, so point 0.3 here, we can say is roughly around 0. 7 or 0 0.6 that means approximately 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 because half of it is 0 0.5 so 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 and note this is 1 so that means at this point here is a very high amount of liquid content inside dry steam is uh sorry a very high amount of moisture okay so the dryness fraction let's say is 0 0.6 and, or 7 but we know as we know that any dryness fraction of lower than 0 0.9 is considered as low quality steam. So that means this point 3, that means the turbine exit here, this is the turbine exit. Point 3 is of low quality steam. And it is also the pump inlet. So low quality steam, what happens is it will cause erosion and wear to the turbine plates, which is not advisable. Okay. Then the next point is the process point from 4 to 1. So the problem here arises is the point 4. The point 4 is actually a mixture of liquid and vapor. So we know that pump cannot handle two phase. Okay, so it's either liquid or it's vapor, or it is completely gas or air. So it cannot handle two phase. So that means that is why it makes the kind of cycle becomes impractical. So that is why the kind of cycle will be modified and we have what we call Rankine cycle later. So this part here, okay, it explains how the steam, how the formation of steam takes place under atmospheric pressure of one atmospheric or 1.01325 bar. So here I have given you the explanation of each stage and then the change in phase of the substance from one to the next that means from A to B, from B to C, C to D, and D to E. So as you take note here, A is compressed liquid. Then B, as you reach B, so here you have saturated liquid. And then saturated liquid, a mixture of saturated vapor. And then here is completely dry saturated vapor. And here is superheated steam. So from point B to D here, as you can see, the temperature is constant. So that is isothermal here. Actually, this whole thing here, okay, is based on the same temperature line here. Okay, so this, sorry. So this is isothermal. 
So what, why does this happen? It's because that all the energy supply to the substance is used to break up the intermolecular bonding so that it becomes steam. Okay, so L, the energy has used up to break up the intermolecular bonding. So that is why the temperature remains constant. And also that is why when there's a change in phase, there shouldn't be any change in temperature. So when there's a change in phase, that means from D to E or from A to B, you can see there is an increase in temperature, but there's no changes in phase here taking place or here. Okay, so the temperature will increase or from here you can see the temperature changes. But at this, you can see the temperature is constant. That is isothermal. So here I have given you the explanation of what is compressed liquid or subcool liquid, what is saturated liquid, what is saturated vapor, what is the saturated liquid vapor mixture, and the superheated vapor or superheated state. Okay, what is quality X? That means your dryness fraction. So that is the definition of dryness fraction here. And so this diagram here is actually referring to what we have here, A, B, C, D, E. So as you refer to your TS diagram, that will be your A, B, C, D, and E. So this happens at constant temperature and constant pressure, B, C, D. But then it is, this is the isothermal line. It's not the horizontal line. The horizontal line is actually the constant pressure line. So this line is the isothermal line. So B, C, D is actually sitting on the same temperature line. So this is where the changes in phase took place. So your saturated liquid line that is D is usually given by a subscript of F. And this is your dry saturated vapor line, which is always uh, given as a subscript of G. Superheated steam, wet steam, or wet vapor, or mixture of liquid and vapor, compressed liquid, dry saturated vapor, and saturated liquid. So here, the explanation. Just take some time to refer to all these things here, which you should have done in physics or in your thermodynamics one. Okay? So here, in this TS diagram, I'm giving you the, uh, the area or the boundary of uh, each phase of uh, the steam or the substance. This is a superheated steam region, wet vapor, compressed liquid. Above this point here, the critical point is gas. So on the dry saturated vapor line, where your x is equal to one, this is what you have: the relationship between each properties. And remember, subscript G refers to dry saturated vapor or steam. Now, for superheated steam or superheated vapor, this is what you get. This is what you have. So if you got any questions, uh, that is that they have given you the uh, given us the volume. Or if let's say, for example, in certain case, you might have found out the volume. And then as compared to the VG, with respect to the particular pressure or temperature, you will get to know that whether it is superheated steam, whether it is dry saturated steam, whether it is wet steam, or it is liquid, by comparing to the properties that is with the subscript G. And here, then you have to compare with the properties with the subscript of F. F refers to saturated liquid. Then if it is wet steam, you have to use all this formula here, either to determine the pro uh, or determine the properties here, or to find out the dryness fractions that is within the formula. Now here, uh, you should have a X here, or an X here, and an X here. It's missing here, the X, the X here, and the X here is missing. So this is my missing. So you should have an X, X, and X here beside. The SFG, you must have an X dryness fraction. Beside the HFG, you must have the X dryness fraction. And beside the UFG, you must have the dryness fraction X. That is this X here. So you must have an X here, an X here, and an X here. Okay, so this is the tutorial. So uh, we will be doing this in the later slide. Thank you very much, finally.